My name is Bear Grylls, and I'm sending out on my most grueling and ghastly trek yet to discover the lifestyle of inhabitants of Denston College. But in order to do this, I realised that I'd need a helping hand. My name is Ross Kemp, and when I was invited to do this documentary, I was thrilled, excited, but anxious. Bear and I are setting out with our camera crew, our drivers, and khaki clothing. Myself and Ross are setting out to see for ourselves how the members of the college live their day-to-day -day lives and aim not only to learn about their personal lives, but those all-important lessons of survival that can help you when you least expect it. Our trip was already off to a bad start as we hit someone upon arrival. Okay, so the important thing to do when you get to the scene and there's a casualty there is you've got to Ignore the problem and hope that it'll go away. So if you give me the camera for a second. Right, okay. Right, so the problem is not going away. So we need to bring matters into our own hands and get the casualty off the scene so no one else knows what's happened. There's so many people in such a close area. It's going to get harder and harder to do this quickly and safely. So, quick and clean. There. Take the gout, I'll take the arms. Quickly as we can. Right. So what we need to do now is create a diversion and put them in a pose that people would not be alarmed by. So I recommend the sunbathing pose is one that people never really acknowledge or get caught out by. Right, back in the automobile. After our close call upon arrival, we realised that the first thing we needed to do was build a shelter. We're going to source materials from design and technology. The one thing you need to do is when you get somewhere that you're not familiar with, is to find those resources and build a shelter as it may help keep you alive. Not only are we here to find resources for shelter, we're also here to familiarise ourselves. We're about to go through the door and see what's on the other side. In here, safety is paramount. Now if you look here, although this might not look like much, it's actually enough to warrant an A star at A level. Now there. Why are we here? The reason we're here, Ross, is the one thing you need to do is build a shelter. And you need to find the right materials to build the right shelter to protect you from the bad bits of the environment. So, Ross, let's go and see what we can find. Let's get hunting. It's important when you're doing this to be extremely stealthy as you don't want to get any issues from the local. Sorry, Ben. I really do some good quality wood. Bear and I realised we'd hit uh. the jackpot. Right, so we got what we need, so now we need to get out of here quick and quietly. Sorry, sorry. if you can hear me but we just managed to safely and securely get materials for our shelter and escape the rays back on our way out so our next stop is the multi gym I realize that this task is going to be much harder
the gymnasium, the home to the vicious gang, the Meatheads. And I'm here to interview their leader, Mr. D Pike. I've been to Afghanistan, I've been to Islamabad, I've been to Hanley, but I've never heard of a gang as vicious as these. <clears throat> so they've agreed to meet with us, but for their own personal gain, we've agreed to keep their identity concealed. So you are? So my name is, uh, is Mr. Pike. I'm going to introduce you to my gang. This is, uh, this is Goose. He's obviously he's the, he's the vicious one. He's got a big beak as well, that's why we call him Goose. He's Ed the car, bulldozes people down like a, uh, like a big car. He's, uh, he's struggling somewhat in the, uh, the gains department, but we're working on that. This is Wilson, the powerhouse, the, the pocket rocket or the nugget. Any one of them is, uh, is his surname and obviously he's, uh, we need another foot of, of, of size on him. Uh, and Nathan, the lamb sister, he's obviously, uh, we're trying to lean him down a little bit. So the, the, one of the biggest guys over here, Kalus, again, if we can get about another foot or two out of him, he, he's a big mean, mean uh, eater machine. I think he, he ate a first former last week, that's what he told me, but yeah, that's, uh, that's my gang. And uh, do you think I have what it takes to join the meatheads? Absolutely not. Right. Do you not think it's rather inhumane the way you bring up these young men to be animals? I mean, it's vicious out there, really. I mean, there's, uh, there's all sorts of kids that are much, much bigger and stronger than these, so we're trying to grow them up. I mean, we feed them about eight times a day. Uh, we, we treat them like animals, like you're saying, but we, uh, we do. It's a vicious world out there, and we need to ensure that uh, they can handle that. So. Right, thanks. Thank you very much, boys. Right. Nice, dig deep, push on. Yes, come on, let's go through. the way, Gus. What are you boys doing? Get out! Get out of there! Kick off, so I'm getting out of here. Get out! Next, we decided to go to the dining hall to get we some food. We are up to our canteen to see if we can find any good source of nutrients to keep us going, and more importantly, keep us alive. So Ross, if you'd like to take a look at the menu, see what we've got in store today. It's Wednesday. It's honey roast bacon steaks. As you can see, we've managed to make our way up to the school canteen to get more of an insight to see what the pupils eat here on a day-to-day -day basis. And as you look closer at that, you can kind of see all the good natural fibres that come out of meat like this. And it really is a blessing in disguise when you get something like this. And that's just fine to eat raw. If you imagine, all your friends and family have mixed together their toenail clippings from over the years. That is what you'd get. Oh, it's just ghastly. The head of discipline, Mr. Jones, has agreed to meet with us. I'm interested to find out about their interrogation methods and how they get answers out of the miscreants. Sorry, sorry. We've caught wind that the interrogation methods used here and one of the most severe in the world. It's either a detention, extended, or God forbid, a conduct card. It's important for us when we're approaching the alpha male figure that we're respectful and graceful. Because if we get on the wrong side of him, we'll be off the site for good and we will no longer be able to film our documentary. For the protection of those inside, the faces have been blurred out. What, what, what are you two driving more than 10 miles an hour uh, on site? Uh, so Clearly it states on the rules. Clearly it states as you drive in, there's a 10 mile an hour uh, speeding uh, limit. Please, fill these in now, quickly for me. I've seen methods like this before in a wreck. And the best thing to do is remain calm and hope that the problem doesn't escalate. As you've heard me say before, it's really important in that survival situation to take any materials you have at hand and use them as good resources. So this, for instance, is just fine to eat as it is. Mm. What are you doing? What are you doing? You can't do that. Get off site. 
right. You haven't even got your cards filled in. Go on. Get oh, off. We need to get out. Yeah. Get out it's ridiculous. Our time at Denston has come to an end. We've learnt some valuable lessons, meeting some extraordinary people, whilst learning how the members of the college go about their day-to-day -day lives by applying those key survival techniques to protect themselves from the elements. However, it's time to say goodbye, and until next time, Bear and Ross out. Let's keep moving.